It's the Catholic Guy Show with Lena Ruli. Featuring co-host Mark Hart, the Bible Geek. Today, Lena welcomes Christina Applegate, the Headless Horseman, and Demon Lord Cthulhu. With music by the Foo Fighters. Plus, Lino does answer the question. Dancing in the rain. Assuming the fetal position. That and more. Now, from his rat-infested apartment in New York City, here's your host, Lino Ruli. Hello, Catholics. And everyone else, welcome to your home for pure Catholic pleasure. It is the Catholic Guy Show coming to you once again. For nearly 13 years, day in, day out, <laughs> here's what I do for my afternoons is try to entertain you nasty listeners. You know, Sometimes you find these local news stories, and there's nothing better than when they get a little religious news story for you. So this one comes to us from our friends in WKMG-TV. This is Orlando, Florida. You know how they you always have a tagline. Like one of the TV stations I worked at was, uh, wait, 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 I just forgot. Oh, geez, what, what was it called? <laughs> Some tagline. <laughs> uh, hang on a second. WCCO TV. Oh, we were the hometown team. That's what we were. So we were the hometown team. <laughs> but I also worked for a TV station, which that was CBS. I worked for a TV station as well, uh, uh, which was an NBC affiliate. News on your side. And no, that was uh, uh, news handled with care. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I don't so even know what that means. The call letters were K A R E, and so the tagline it was oh. news. But it still didn't. By, by the way, it didn't make it any better, Tyler. Well, it was just that's what they called it. Well, at least I understand what they were kind of going for. They were going for the pun. I mean, th- what they said made no sense, but at least there was a reason they went for it. I mean, news handled with care, it, you know, in and of itself, really makes no sense. It's like, really, why did you even go there in the first place? Good. Yeah. Well, now that we've established <laughs> that. Thanks. Well said, Tyler. And uh, then I worked for a Fox TV affiliate, and uh, as far as I recall, they didn't even have a tagline. The tagline is, anybody actually watching this? <laughs> <laughs> We're Fox in the 80s. We didn't get ratings. <laughs> Fox in the 90s. Excuse me, Tyler. All no, right. no, no. This was Fox in the 2000s I was working there. I'm not that old. Come on, man. <laughs> well. <laughs> and then, no, I never worked for but then also in that same market, there was the ABC affiliate, and theirs were they were eyewitness news. However, this this story out of Orlando, Florida, and WKMG TV wins it all. Their tagline is "Getting Results." <laughs> <laughs> and when you hear the story, you're gonna go, "No, you you didn't get results actually." But so it's it's a local news story, and it has to do with Jesus. I'm sold, and I'm already laughing. Well, a man says someone stole a Jesus statue from his yard. Statue. Okay, let me just stop already. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it a statue of Jesus? Is it called a Jesus statue, Mark? I think it's a <laughs> statue of Jesus. I believe it is a statue of Jesus, much like the Statue of Liberty. Yes, exactly. No, no, that's called the Liberty statue. Right, exactly. <laughs> I, I, mis- I was misspoken. I know. Actually, Jesus you just did it again, but whatever. Well, a man says someone stole a Jesus statue from his yard. The statue was in Sorrento near the intersection of County Road 435 and Dubs Dread Avenue. Over the weekend, it was taken. News 6's Lauren Cervantes has more on how neighbors are asking for help. The man who lives here tells me there used to be a four-foot-tall Jesus statue in his <laughs> Again, okay. I don't know why they're insisting on the Jesus statue being the wording here. I believe you're saying <laughs> statue of Jesus. Nonetheless... The man who lives here tells me there used to be. Well, well, what is he, just making this up? I have a feeling the man's telling the truth. I mean, I, I, I understand as a reporter you have to be objective, but it feels to me like you don't have to be objective in everything. Well, the man, I don't know, a man tells me <laughs> that there was a Jesus statue here. I don't have my second source to confirm that indeed he did own a Jesus statue in his front yard. Back to you. I just can't get over the Jesus statue thing. And it was one thing if it's just the you know uh, uh, some producer in studio who wrote the script calling it a Jesus statue, but this is clearly how they're selling the story. Is Jesus statue is the phrase? I like it. 
Awesome. Front yard. That statue stood right here in this spot next to the roadway. Drivers today and people in the area remember seeing it, but only for a short period of time. That's <laughs> okay. Now again, two two different things here. So first he says, "Well, a man tells me there was a statue here," and now she says, "And I've confirmed that from several <laughs> other sources." <laughs> Okay, well, <laughs> then it sounds to me like there was a Jesus statue, or as humans call it, a statue of Jesus, <laughs> that was there. <laughs> well, why did you call into credibility? <laughs> why did you call into his credibility in a question at the very top of it? Then when you go, now to be fair, everyone I've asked says yes, there was a Jesus statue there. <laughs> <laughs> but only for a short time. Yeah, oh, only a short time. Why is that? For a short period of time. That's because the owner says someone took it. Again, <laughs> questioning. <laughs> this does not seem like a reporter who takes anybody at their word. <laughs> well, this guy told me there was a statue there. Everybody says there was. And now he says it's gone, but I don't believe him until somebody else tells me it's gone. Well, why do you hate this guy so much? Why not just accept his testimony? There are unconfirmed he reports that Jesus' statue walked away on its own and, in fact, was not stolen. He already lost Jesus. How much worse does his day get? <laughs> All right. So now, that, now, of course, it went from the two anchors, and why do you have to have two anchors to, to pitch this story? I have no idea. So they had the two anchors pitch that story out to the reporter in the field, now the reporter will send it to the package. I've only seen it like maybe twice, and after that it just gone. And now just to be clear, that's not someone who inhaled a ton of helium before <laughs> doing the interview. <laughs> we represent the lollipop girl, the lollipop girl, the lollipop girl. Was just, was just a, a middle-aged Caucasian woman is how I would describe her. Take us to your Jesus statue. With, with just a very odd voice. Again, don't ask me. I don't work in news anymore. I'm just a dopey Catholic radio host, but I don't open with that voice at the beginning of my package because it's very disturbing to the ears. <laughs> only seen it like maybe twice, and after that, it just gone. Sorry. Which prompted Phil and <laughs> what? What Mark? I'm sorry. It really does sound like helium. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when some when someone's voice makes Tyler sound like a master linguist with an English <laughs> accent, I don't even know what to do. Right. It's it's wild, wild. I tell you. Which prompted Phil and Bibro to post this on Facebook. Okay. Now you couldn't hear at all what she said, which is sad because she's a reporter. She said, fellow Ambivero. <laughs> That's the name of the man who has claimed a four-foot Jesus statue was stolen from his yard. His name is fellow Ambivero. No, first of all, I think that's a fantastic name. And don't be surprised if you see me on, like, my, I'm going to make a fake Twitter handle, at fellow Ambivero, because I'm a big <laughs> fan of this guy's name. The reporter kind of got it very confused, the name. Which prompted Fellow and Bivero to post this on... <laughs> Could you say it any faster? <laughs> uh, which prompted Fellow and Bivero to do this. Okay, good. Facebook, asking if anyone had seen his statue. He says, my Jesus statue got stolen this weekend from my front yard. <laughs> okay, would you quit calling it a Jesus statue? It's a statue of Jesus. <laughs> my Jesus statue. <sighs> So, I mean, they don't, they don't believe, fellow, but then as soon as he's, he's the one who called it a Jesus statue, and now all the reporters and anchors and everybody's calling it a Jesus statue. And it was in this spot off of CR 435. And Bivero's friend Wesley Colon says the statue was important to both of them. <laughs> Which, by the way, it should be more important than just to those two people. Well, it was also important <laughs> to me. <laughs> one billion Christians worldwide. That's right. <laughs> Two billion Christians worldwide. One billion uh, Catholics in the world. And then and Bivero and his buddy get to be the only ones who care. But the reason why his friend cares about the Jesus statue is an absolute home run. As far as I can tell, it has nothing to do with Jesus being the savior of the world or the second person of the Holy Trinity or the one who saves us from our sins or the one who by his resurrection we have eternal life. Somebody stole their Jesus statue, and it meant a lot to them because? The statue was important because it was something that we used to use at the racetrack to Wait. symbolize us coming together. Wait, what? I'm sorry? <laughs> Wait, what? At the, at, the, at the racetrack? Like the ponies? At the racetrack, but hear it again. The statue was important because it was something that we used to use at 
the racetrack to symbolize us coming together. <laughs> so there's a point that you guys could meet at? <laughs> I don't know, Tyler. This Jesus statue, the Jesus statue should just be a Jesus statue. It should, it should represent Christ. That's it. I've never heard of a Jesus statue at the racetrack, let alone it symbolizes us coming together. Well, no, it should symbolize <laughs> Jesus hey. Christ, the Savior of the world. That's what that's what the Jesus statue should symbolize. I don't know why it just symbolizes uh, guys getting together at the racetrack. Hey, hey, bring your cash in your racing form. I'll meet you underneath that statue with the guy with the beard. It'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> They'll continue to explain it, but I tell you, this is one of my favorite local news stories of all time. Cologne and Imbibro used to host drifting events at the Central Florida Racing Complex. <laughs> I, I don't the know statues. what that means. If, is that an event for drifters, vagabonds, or what is a drifter? What is drifting? I don't know what that means. Well, my understanding of drifting is when you, you take your car and you try to swing it around an edge and you're, you kind of have the brakes on. So it, it, think of like uh, the Fast and the Furious, how they go around like turns and stuff like that. That's okay. what drifting is. So these two guys used to have drifting events at the racetrack. So not a horse racetrack, but a car racetrack where there's just drifting going on. Correct. And Jesus is there? Yeah, yeah Jesus is there to bring them all together, apparently. Okay, he'll continue. Events at the Central Florida Racing Complex. The statue stood there at the track and became something he says people loved to see. Jesus is watching you. Jesus is protecting you. Like if you came close to the wall and almost crashed and, oh, Jesus saved you. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, Jesus does save. <laughs> Jesus saves But now that souls. the statue's gone, <laughs> his powers are gone. Well, well there's, there's two things that he said there. First of all, <laughs> so really, when we, when we as Christians say Jesus saves, we're talking about eternal souls of each human being. That's what Jesus saves. And if you put Jesus at a racetrack <laughs> and <laughs> you don't hit the wall, Jesus saves you. But everybody knows you only go to the racetrack to watch guys drive head into a wall. <laughs> and then what is the religious sentiment we are left with? Well, Jesus didn't save you. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's recap where we're at with this story because we're only a minute 15 in to one of the greatest local news stories that's ever been told. <laughs> this, is, this is so good on so many levels. And I'm just trying nobody, to process it all. And nobody can, can be surprised that this story came out of Florida because <laughs> only Florida could deliver you this story. So a guy named Fellow Imbivero. <laughs> Still one of the greatest names of all time. <laughs> Fellow Easily. Imbivero is his name. Fellow Imbivero. Claims he used to have a four-foot, quote-unquote, Jesus statue in his yard. The reporter then says she interviewed a bunch of people who say, yes, that's right. <laughs> he did used to have this. <laughs> now it's stolen, and it meant a lot to two people because it used to be at a racetrack for a place to, quote-unquote, symbolize us coming together, and Jesus saved drivers. The story like gets, now the story gets weirder. But when the track closed, Ambivro kept the statue as a memento. Was this something of a keepsake? <laughs> That's not a keepsake. A four-foot <laughs> statue of Jesus Christ isn't a keepsake. <laughs> if, if, so if, if you go to Las Vegas and you, you keep a, a five-dollar chip, that's a keepsake. <laughs> If you go to the Holy Land and you're on the Sea of Galilee, you take a rock, that's a keepsake. You're betting at the track and you steal a four-foot statue of the Lord. That's not a keepsake. It's a keepsake. It's a tchotchke. It's not a tchotchke. I'm going to put it with my spoon collection. What are you talking about? It's a four-foot statue. I've never heard of anything so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. All right, a keepsake nonetheless for the track and like I said it's important to us that we get it back because you can't get another one okay of course you can get another one <laughs> no but, but. no it's the only one you never you never seen a four foot Jesus statue like this it's the only you one get, you can literally get Jesus statues anywhere now not necessarily <laughs> stealing from a racetrack but you can just go and buy a Jesus statue can you imagine if these two clowns are not if these two people are the only ones with a Jesus statue in the world and now I'm calling it a Jesus statue when we really mean a statue of Jesus <laughs> <laughs> just, I love when Lino loses his mind over this kind of stuff. I it's mean, so what is good. going on? How, and, and again, and how is this a local news story? How is this a story at all? 
What are people talking about? What is KM, WKMG with their tagline, getting results out of Orlando, Florida? How is this the story that your news director approved? How is this the story that everybody agreed on? Did anybody look at the script? Did anybody? Oh. The only result they should have is someone losing their job. I mean, these quotes, these quotes. Well, we wanted it as a keepsake. You stole a statue of Jesus Christ from a car track. And you can't, beca- well, because we can't get another one. Of course you can. Every Catholic church in the world has a statue of Jesus Christ. Uh, if only you someone s- had the idea to make Jesus statues. Did you see how I call it a statue of Jesus Christ and not a Jesus statue? It's because Jesus statue isn't a phrase. You guys have got me calling it a Jesus statue, you maniacs. All right, now here's where the story actually gets weird. I told you it would get weird. Now it gets weirder than what you just heard. <laughs> It eventually ended up here along CR 435. Wait, wait a second. You kind of buried the lead. Didn't the story begin with somebody's Jesus statue was stolen? A minute and a half in, she's like, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Ta freaking da. Wow, well, they, they didn't uh, lie about their call letters. They get results. Wait wow. a second. You're, uh, the entire premise is a man had a Jesus statue and it was stolen and nobody would ever be able to find it again. And then you have three seconds of Nat sound of a car driving by, and you're like, here it is. <laughs> it eventually ended up here along CR 435. Well, then it seems to me it's not a story. The whole first part is like, where the hell is it? Here. Oh. <laughs> well, especially the other guy, the guy's like, well, we really need to get it back. You have it back. They found it. <laughs> it's over there. <laughs> it's literally right in front of my face. The well, camera guy could t- probably hit it with spit. <laughs> Who, we don't know what to do. We'll never find another one. <laughs> oh, okay, right we'll just take that one since that's yours. <laughs> it's just in a different location. Just because it, just because it's moved, doesn't mean it's. Uh, or is it? And neighbors, along with drivers we spoke with today, say they remember seeing it. It's sad that someone would have stole it, and hopefully, you know, they'll be able to find it. Or... <laughs> what are you talking about, Helium Lady? Why does Helium Lady say we hope we can find it? The reporter just found it. Let me replay this for you. This is the strangest 15 seconds of local news I've ever heard. The whole premise is the, sto- the statue is stolen. The reporter goes, here it is. Then talks to interview uh, helium lady, and she's like, well, I don't know where the hell it is. <laughs> Follow the other big road. Follow the other big road. <laughs> it eventually ended up here along CR 435, and neighbors, along with drivers we spoke with today, say they remember seeing it. It's sad that someone would have stole it, and hopefully, you know, they'll be able to find it. Or... They found it. <laughs> Are you listening to what happened 10 <laughs> seconds ago? They found it. But the reporter's the one who put this together. She knows it was found. Now she puts helium lady back on there just to make her look like an oof. I, I got a oof. theory, Mark. Here's what I think. You've heard of these people who start fires so that they can be the hero and save uh, the, 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 the fire, the people in the fire? I think the reporter stole the statue, didn't tell anybody, and revealed it at the end of this story. And that's why she's got to rep- oh, and the, the story gets weird. No, and now it gets weirder. Now, this is why you go, well, nobody knows anything about Christianity anymore. <laughs> Somebody will turn it in. Now we asked the owner of the statue if it is a Jesus statue because it looks like it could be one of the three. <laughs> wait, wait a second, wait a second. We asked the owner of the statue if it could be a Jesus statue. Again, nobody calls it that. But then the reporter slides this one in. We asked the owner of the statue if it is a Jesus statue because it looks like it could be one of the three wise men. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 well, and wait. you know, those wait. people all look alike. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hold this on. is the greatest news story in history. <laughs> we asked if it could be, because it could be one of the three wise men. Right. Is it one of the three wise men or Jesus Christ, second person of the Holy Trinity? <laughs> she, the reporter's like, we asked if it's a Jesus statue. Again, not a phrase. Or oh. is it possible it's something else? <laughs> Somebody will turn it in. Now we asked the owner of the statue if it is a Jesus statue because it looks like it could be one of the three wise men. That's what neighbors had pointed out today. But he says it's Jesus and he's had him in his family for years. (laughs) (laughs) But wasn't he just at the racetrack? (laughs) Now, now, just to recap, this is the story. This reporter opens it by saying, fellow Ambivero had a four-foot Jesus statue stolen. 
they explain that the statue had meaning not because Jesus Christ is Lord, mm -hmm. but because Jesus' statue used to be at a racetrack. And for some reason, one of his friends says, quote, it symbolized us coming together, <laughs> end quote. <laughs> He, this friend continued to say, we kept it. It was just a bit of a keepsake, i.e. they stole it from the racetrack. Mm -hmm. Then the reporter says, but here it is. We found it at this guy's house. When asked if it was a Jesus statue or <laughs> the three wise men, he said, it's Jesus. I've had him for years. <laughs> well, then how did you just accuse the guy? You, then, then it's clearly not the statue, is it? <laughs> she just said, this is the statue. Then we asked the guy, is this the statue? He said, no. <laughs> now, with all this confusion, how, how do you think the story ends? Take a listen. And he has now started a Facebook group for that statue. Who? <laughs> Who started what Facebook group for what statue? Did fellow Abolabaro? Start a Facebook group for the Jesus statue? Did the other guy start a Facebook stat group because it's a three wise men that it's always been in his family? It raises way more questions and answers, and then she just says... In Lake County, I'm Lauren Cervantes, <laughs> getting results, New Six. No, you didn't get any results. results. You muddied the water worse than I've ever seen. <laughs> getting results. If the result you were looking for was confounding and confusing the crap out of everyone watching the newscast, <laughs> results are in. Well done. <laughs> Ma'am, your your story raises more questions than it answers. Well, it could be Jesus. It could be Balthazar, the third wise man. <laughs> There's no way of knowing for sure. <laughs> it's one of the great stories of all time. <laughs> and as the Bible says, Jesus wept. <laughs> I mean, I have no idea what is going on. Yeah, my and, Jesus and statue wept. Uh huh. <laughs> oh. Doesn't there have to be some sort of resolution with this? I could listen to this story another ten times and find another thirty flaws <laughs> in every piece of journalism that is presented here. And this was the oh. final cut too. Imagine what the what the uh what the rough edit <laughs> looked like. <laughs> you can just see the news director. Get on that story. There's a great nugget in there somewhere. Just <laughs> keep mining for it. Keep paying here's for it. Here's what both. else and here's what drives me absolutely nuts about all of this stuff. And here's here's what drives me nuts when it comes to <laughs> here's what drives me nuts when it comes to journalism. It's gotten to the point now where there is no truth. And so they're like, well, it might be a statue of Jesus and it might be a statue of the three wise men. Who are we to judge? <laughs> you, you're literally a journalist. Your job is to tell us so that we don't have to figure it out on, on our own. Now, I'll tell you this. This statue, I believe, is a statue of the three wise men. I don't believe they ever had a Jesus statue, period, end of story. Oh, I think they always had a statue of the three wise men. I think so, too. I think so, too. <laughs> That's what I believe has happened the entire time. But with that said, this is the point of journalism, and this is why nobody, this is not nobody, this is why we, so many of us have a very difficult time trusting journalists or taking news seriously anymore, is if you can't tell me if a statue in a guy's yard is Jesus Christ or one of the three wise men, if you can't give me that basic fact, fact I'm asking for here, then what are, we, what are we even doing here? Then the story is somebody might have stolen something and somebody else might have it. <laughs> Let's just recap and what we know. <laughs> one of them might have started a Facebook page. <laughs> and they might have had it for years or they might have stolen it from a racetrack. Damn you, Florida. <laughs> I mean, why? Why can't you guys? Why can't one of the hurricanes hit you guys and like just get rid of the dumb people? I mean, I can't figure this out. <laughs> oh my god! No, I'm kidding. Of course, I'm kidding. The entire state would be gone. But the point is this. <laughs> but would you love to see that news story? How do you not know the difference between Jesus Christ, Son of Man, and Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, and the three wise men, one of the, th the men from the East who came bearing gifts for the Christ child? If we can't agree on certain basic facts like that, then we don't have anything. No wonder we, 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 we can't have anything. We can't have anything good. Hey, it's a I... statue of a bearded guy with a crown holding a, a present filled with gold. Hey, that's Jesus. Hey, it's <laughs> Kanye West. I mean, who knows? <laughs> He's got a beard. And a robe. It must be the Lord. <laughs> but, and I have no idea why we've made these men Italian. <laughs> <laughs> well, you make all men Italian. That's true. Oh, <laughs> hey -oh. Mark started it as a, a 
the guy's anyways. I guess I'm <laughs> I'm Bavero. Sounds that could be Italian. I thought he was Spanish. I don't know. Who knows? I don't I'm think exhausted. he even knows. He can't tell Jesus from the Magi. He, I'm not sure he knows what that is. I'm telling is. you, Mark, I look at this statue. I think it's the three wise men. I don't think they ever had a Jesus statue in their possession in the first place. <laughs> 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 the best part is, like, how do you know? He's like, well, we've had it for years. Well, h- how do you know? Well, we've had it for years. Like, <laughs> like possession somehow tells him that it must be. <sighs> Jesus, in the news, <laughs> no, never Balthazar. wins. No, any any time, and any time, any time, <laughs> they try to do anything about religion. It just drives me batty. They nobody can figure out how to talk about religion. It might be God. <laughs> might be not God. Jeez, that seems important. <laughs> <laughs> important for the story. That's a super important detail in like for the history of salvation. I'm pretty sure Balthazar died for my sins. No, wait. <laughs> Caspar did. No, wait. Oh, Jesus did. Well, whatever. <laughs> they, they all lived around the same time. Boy, if that's not a story for the ages, I simply don't know what is. So thanks to our friends <laughs> at WKMG. Did I get the the call letters right? WKMG TV in Orlando, Florida, getting results. Getting results. <laughs> the only result, of course, is getting goofed on on the Catholic Guy show. <laughs> I'm exhausted. I'm, ju- I'm just, I, I, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this to myself. Uh, who? I was going to say, Tyler, who wound up Lido today? <laughs> sometimes, Nobody. You, you, no, sometimes these shows, you come out of the gate, you got a full head of steam, man. Me and Tyler, just, it's, it's like we, just, we, we, we look, we see, we just step to the side, we let you right through. We're not getting on the tracks for that one, man. That locomotive. <laughs> had a full head of steam we came into this intro that was good balthazar christ oh no i don't know if it was him or not i don't know if christ meaning the anointed one the savior i don't i don't know what i mean by the last by the title the statue is very important to us because it's very symbolic we used to meet at it at the racetrack <laughs> and it saves so us together. from hitting the wall <laughs> we're drifting <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> They're not too quick, and Lino's furious. <laughs> this day and age. This day and age. This is why I got out of local news, but I'm working in Catholic radio, and I'm still I'm still working around local news. I can't get away from news. Maybe I don't want to go news. back into news. I mean, if this is the state of news at this point, maybe you have to save that, too. It's too much work. <laughs> he can't be I, the savior. Balthazar's the savior. <laughs> That's right. If if I save all, what's Caspar going to do? <laughs> well, we can still meet at him. <laughs> uh, I, I know. I, I Maybe I do have to get into news again. It's It's all insanity. The problem is... I'm a moron. Everybody knows I'm a moron. You, 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 I'm on the radio. I try to make people laugh and say funny things and make an insightful point every once in a while. I can't be a news director. Uh, don't suck. I mean, what am I going to do every day? <laughs> Your entire story is flimsy. It has no journalistic integrity whatsoever. You're fired immediately. You can see the daily meeting. All right, people, get out there and don't suck. <laughs> yes, Mr. Rooley. <laughs> <laughs> so good. That's our motto. Getting results? No. Don't suck. Oh. K. Ruley, don't suck. Okay. And there you have it. Another Catholic Guy podcast is complete. We gotta fly. CatholicGuy.com is the website. Tell your friends, neighbors, clergymen, parole officers all about us. Take care and God bless. Bye bye. <laughs>